Hi everybody, this is Ellie. Thanks so much for joining me for a flip through of the months of March and April in my Hobonichi cousin. I have my cousin in my custom yard and the leathersmith cover. I do have a video with a full review on that, so I will link it up above. I also keep the notebook itself in this clear vinyl cover from Lauren Phelps Designs. Sorry about the glare. Sometimes if I want to kind of go lighter, I will just slip it out and use this notebook on its own. And I love having options, so both of these covers work great for me and I love that I can use them together. I didn't get to a March flip through because I was sick at the end of March and there was a lot of blank space in here. There's still a lot of blank space, but I figured I could just combine the months together to show you. Just a quick update on my yearly overview. I love how this spread is working for me, so I will track my Instagram numbers, my YouTube subscribers, and if I earn any money from Google AdSense, which is the ads that you'll see on these videos. And thank you guys so much for watching them and for the support. Then on the days, I just go ahead and write down the date that I post a video. And it's really helpful for me to be able to see all of this in one space. As you can tell, I never ended up using this bottom space. I had a vague idea of maybe choosing a comment or an interaction or two from my videos and writing it in here, but that hasn't happened yet and I'm not going to force it. I'll see if something kind of evolves organically for me to use here. And if not, that's totally fine too. I'm really happy with the content and function of this spread as is. Heading into my monthlies, you'll see that March is only halfway finished and I'm okay with that. I do have the monthly holographic stickers from Shine Sticker Studio, which I really love, especially because they're on the clear sticker paper. Here it's the same as usual. I choose a memory, I practice some hand lettering, I find a sticker to kind of represent that memory, and I love looking at it. I always find these spreads so, so happy. This is a custom scone sticker from Crystal Create, which is perfect because on this girl's day, we had some delicious homemade scones that my brother's girlfriend made. You'll also notice if you look closely enough too that I often mess up in these spreads. I don't usually do these every day, so sometimes I'll do, you know, three to seven days at a time. And for some reason I get mixed up, but I just write oops and uh, leave it. I think it's hilarious when I'm flipping back through it in the end. April took a totally different vibe. This is very, very minimal and it turns out I love it. This wasn't a plan ahead of time. I had just gotten really behind and I didn't want to go back and look through all my stickers. So I thought I would give this a try. This is just my Uniball Signo in the 0 0.38. And I just kind of chose the lines that I wanted my writing to be on so that it was consistent. And it just feels really clean and easy to read. So this is what May is going to look like too. I love both styles equally. It's just really what I'm in the mood for. So it's always fun to play around and try something new. Coming into my weeklies and dailies is where you'll see a lot more empty pages. I'm sorry for any background noise that you might hear. I film by my window, which faces a busy street and our neighbors have a puppy that I think they're trying to train to spend more time outside, which right now means he barks and whimpers at their back door a lot. So hopefully that doesn't come through too much. But back to the cousin. So I do like to use kits, but I find that I use them pretty minimally. So this is a kit from Raspberry Designs. I love the date covers. I really like the washi and some of the boxes if I have any appointments or anything that I kind of want to stand out. But I tend not to use the full boxes or the checklists. So what I end up doing with those is I will either use pieces of them in my other spreads, my dailies, or even in other weeklies. And I also gift them away or send them in happy mail to people who will use those things. 
but these are memory keeping spreads. So I'm trying to come up with a more consistent format that works for me. That's actually what I've been playing around with more in May, but I do like to track any movement that I do. And these are a set of stamps from Carbon Stamps, which I love. It came with the yoga mat, the running shoe, and a weight, which you won't see in here yet. They're the perfect size and I love using those. Then I just write down any memories and I'll add little stickers again to kind of represent the memories. So here as well, I was doing pretty well before I got sick, consistent with my movement. Put in daylight savings time up here. See, this was left over from another kit that I had, also Raspberry Designs. I didn't have the date covers because I'd already used them, so I just went ahead with a kind of complimentary Tombow and colored it in. I think I'm realizing that I like a little bit less color in the stickers that I'm using. This is fun, but busier. This is actually still pretty minimal for me, but some of the ones in the past have felt quite busy. So I do like the more muted and black, white, and gray colors with the stickers, as well as the smaller size. And this is where it fell off. So I debated going back and kind of back planning these memories, but right now I simply didn't want to, and that's okay. I had to kind of intentionally remind myself to just start from where I am and move forward. It can be overwhelming for me sometimes to think that I have to go back, I have to catch up, it has to be, you know, complete and perfect or maybe just complete. But if I linger on that thought, I just won't get back into it. So I just told myself, start from where you are. If you ever want to go back and fill in those pages, you have your bullet journal for reference. And if you don't, that is also completely fine. So that is where I am right now with a big old section of blank pages and being okay with that. I did use one of these blank pages. I'm not sure how well it picks up the pencil. Oh yeah, you can kind of see it. To play around with that kind of consistent format I've been talking about for May. So I wanna keep kind of my self-care movement at the top, which is what I was doing with the stamps. And I wanted to keep what I'm watching, either TV or movies, in one consistent line. I just like how clean that looks. I played around with the idea of adding gratitude in a sticker and just knowing that I'd leave space for washi tape at the bottom. So I didn't try that out in here yet. This is one of those kind of busier spreads that I'm talking about. This is a washi tape from London Gifties that I was sent as a sample from Robin at Talks From The Heart. These are a couple of full boxes from an old sticker kit. So this one's just kind of messy, but I still like it. I can still look at the pictures and remember seeing the Fox family on our walks and giving myself a home haircut with the help of my brother, my mom's birthday. And the last week of April, this is where I started putting that format into play. And I like how it turned out. So I'm slowly getting back into kind of consistent movement. I'm only using the minimal small stickers from Planner Monkey Co. in this spread. And then what I've been doing is instead of writing all of the details that might have been in my bullet journal for that day, including tasks. I'm choosing to write the memories that kind of stand out. Like I love looking at my bullet journal and seeing all the nitty gritty details. Oh, you know, I dusted that day, I had to run an errand. I like that full picture, but in here, I'm hoping for less about the minutia and more about the overview. I hope that makes sense. I also decided that I would like to use a sticker per day, just choosing something from that day that stood out and representing it with a sticker. Because I'm not using my stickers right now in the monthlies, I thought this would be a great way to use them, and I really like that. 
Like this, this map is from the Coffee Monsters Co. And Paul and I were trying to find a park we hadn't been to before. And, you know, took a few detours along the way. You know, having multiple walks this day, one with Desi. Binging shows, we finished season four of Superstore and season one, the only season so far of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So I'm really, really happy with how these weeklies are coming together. I'm still tweaking and playing around in May, and I'll be sure to show you guys how that turns out. So flipping through March, here is my March review. I always love these pages. So, you know, whatever I'm reading, I'm watching. I was watching a lot of Disney this month, and I also watched The Making of Frozen 2. I had no idea what goes into animation, so it was really fun to watch. Plus, I love that movie, so it was kind of neat to revisit it from behind the scenes. You know, my highlights, the my birthday, some delicious potato pancakes, the girls' day, and then we go into the dailies themselves. Oh, this is just a piece of paper that I use for testing and also blotting at this point. This is the Cosmo Air Light that really shows off the characteristics of ink. So I don't know if you can tell here, this one is sheening. My lighting might not be great, but I like having that just slipped in. I've been writing an affirmation in my daily pages since the beginning of this journal and I love this practice. I don't get to it every day, but I do try to. One of the other things that I wanted to incorporate was gratitude and what would make today great. So I have an old journal. Let me grab it. This is a journal that I bought years ago. It's called the five minute journal and I got it from chapters or indigo. So it has to do with focusing on gratitude. So it does have kind of an explanation in the front, how it works, the principles. And then these are what the pages look like. Let me show you first a blank one. So it's undated, you put the date, it has either a quote or a challenge, and it has a morning and an evening section. So the idea is that you sit with it first thing in the morning and before you go to bed. So I am grateful for what would make today great daily affirmations. And in the evening when you reflect, it's three amazing things that happened today and how could I have made today even better? I loved using this when my anxiety was at a peak. I really found this helpful. So this is from 2018. This one had a weekly challenge, do a one minute spontaneous dance right now. I am grateful for. So this was all really, really good. And I wanted to incorporate this into my current system. I would actually love to use this again, but it's just not realistic having another system added. So I wanted to figure out how I could incorporate that into the systems I already have. So what I decided was to put the morning parts in here. So I am grateful for, and what would make today great. I am already doing an affirmation. So this is all done in the mornings. I was trying to figure out, again, a format that would help me be consistent with it. I tend to work best and be more consistent when I already have a structure, even if it is a very minimal one. I just need to kind of know what's expected and not have to deal with my own indecisiveness. So you'll see me playing with that in here. I had a couple of Happy Mail deliveries, some documented journey stickers, and some washi tape from Together With KX. My birthday. This is what I ended up changing. So here I had done the highlight and written I am grateful for and what would make today great, but I know that's what is going to go here. So I just ended up kind of framing it out with my Tombow. This is the N79, I believe. And this is working really, really well. You'll see, I think on the next page, actually, I bump it up a little bit more. Yeah, so four spaces and six spaces here. And I have found that to be more than enough space. Something else that I started doing this month is actually going ahead and pre-decorating my pages. And I really, really love it. First of all, it's a lot of fun to do. I do it while I'm watching baseball or maybe if I'm re-watching a movie. 
and I just go through my stash. So these are old washi tape stickers I have. Unfortunately, I won't be able to name everything. There's going to be a lot. But if you do have a question about anything specific, you can always ask in the comments. I was using my fountain pen. I ordered the Note and Wish box from March. It had so many greens and neutrals, which I absolutely loved. You can see I'm going along pretty consistent here. This is more Note and Wish. It all came from the same order. One of their wax seals I put in here. I drew my own kind of little washy corner. One of the things that I did kind of struggle with a little bit was I felt like if I decorated the pages and then didn't write in them or like fill them up with, you know, mementos, then it would be a waste. And that's just kind of all or nothing thinking. The fact is that it's beautiful and I enjoyed doing it. So it's not a waste just because it isn't some, you know, no white space page. Just a reminder in case anyone else falls into that same type of thinking. If it's giving you joy while you're doing it, in my opinion, that's enough. And you'll see some days I don't get in here, very little writing. That's fine. This is also coming to where I was sick, I think. So I feel like we might be coming up on some almost totally blank pages. This was the sticker that came on Documented Journeys packaging, so I cut that out and included it. I love Breeze style. Some Allie Brown washi. And here's where you'll see I didn't get in here at all. Still have some nicely decorated pages though. This was my characters dashboard for our stationary stockpile challenge. I love this. It's a lot of fun to make A5 size ones now because there is so much space. Carbon stamps, those little exercise stamps I mentioned. And these are just some beautiful pages. This is the order from Sugary Inks where I got the Cosmo Air Light paper. Look at those cats, so cute. And then we move into April. I realize I think I like the format like this better sectioned into two columns instead of all in one line each. So reading, you know, was I watching The Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Inspired by the sustainable slow fashion community. <laughs> Quoting, a place for everything and everything in its place. And then it says, aspirational. <laughs> I do my best guys, but I tend to spread out and make a big old mess. The Jay's season started, it was my mom's birthday, the Fox family. Oh, here I was testing my new brush pens from Sailor. These are the Sailor Shikiori, the Four Seasons brush pens. They're gorgeous. I love these colors. I will use, yeah, every single one of them. Sometimes there's colors that just don't really suit my style or I can't see myself using too often. And of course there are some here that I'll use less often. I never really gravitate towards pinks, but even so I do like that this is a softer pink and this is a beautiful color too. I went ahead and wrote the Japanese names as well as the English names. So I'm going to have a lot of fun playing with these. Again, you're going to see some blank pages. This is from Brandy Kincaid. I subscribe to her Extravagant Hope mailers and she just has some beautiful words and images and perspectives. So that's been a joy to receive. I'm slowly getting back into my journaling. So this is, you know, coming off being sick. I hadn't pre-decorated any pages but I still wanted to get in here for my morning routine and do my affirmations, what I'm grateful for and what would make today great. I love including the thumbnails for my videos on the days that I've posted them, even if there's nothing else on those pages. Brandy Kincaid again, and London Gifties.
trying out my new inks on the Timoe River paper. This is my spring dashboard for April's stationary stockpile challenge. What's in my planner tote? That was a fun video to film. Brandy Kincaid again with a Jane Austen quote. So April, you can see very, very minimal, no pre-decorating, and that's okay. I do like pre-decorating. I am doing that again in May, but some months it's not going to happen, and that's fine too. And on the last day of April here, I had received a package from Pentel Canada for their Canadian Ambassadors program, and they sent me some pens and brush markers to try out, so I just swatched those in here, and they're all beautiful. And that's the end. That goes right into May. So I guess the overall theme and thoughts of this flip through are that it's okay to be where you are, whatever that looks like. Even for me, someone who talks about wanting to be as consistent as possible and liking to have kind of a format that I follow, you can see things changed a lot. I had a totally pre-decorated month and then a month with very, very little in it. All of that is okay. I think for me, the most important part is just to start where I am, to recognize where I am, be okay with it, and then just start from there. I don't want to fall into the pressure of needing to fix or perfect everything that came before because then I just won't get started at all. So... What is that quote? Start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. And we'll see what May brings. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.